Okay, let's call this meeting to order. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Ms. Secretary, if we could have a roll call, please. Mr. Gitchia? Here. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Here. Mr. Hogan? Present. Mr. LeMay? Here. Mr. Narco? Mr. Sheen? Here. Mr. Bahu? Here. Okay, um, Mr. Richardson, is there anybody signed up on a sheet that's sitting right next to you to speak? No, there is not. Okay, thank you. Now, school committee uh, communications. I think the first thing I want to do is welcome our newest members. We have Mr. Richardson, um, who is representing Dunstable for the next four years. We thank you. We welcome you for being here. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to your input. I'm looking forward also. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. We also are welcoming Mr. Hogan representing the town of Lowell, Massachusetts. Welcome, you've been here before. And um, I'm sure you're very seasoned and uh, you, you'll hit the ground running. I'm here to work under your tutelage. <laughs> That's great to hear. I look forward to that. Thank you, Mr. Hogan. Mr. Narco representing Tingsboro is a little bit under the weather tonight, therefore he's not here. We'll welcome him next meeting. Uh, any school committee uh, communications? No, oh, not yet. None. Great. And now we're going to have the uh, report of the student representative. That's you, Nellie. Okay. Our first one up is Skills USA. Skills USA hosted their annual, annual community outreach challenge in conjunction with the eighth grade open house held earlier this month. In the challenge, student shop representatives were, at, were tasked with planning at least one interactive station that allowed our eighth grade visitors to feel what it's like to be in that shop. This year, the focus was on the workplace skills, essential element of planning, organi organizing, and management. There were 28 interactive stations during this year's event, which was judged by members of our Skills USA alumni and friends organization. The winning shops were carpentry first place, electrical second place, and culinary third place. Next, we have student activities. Student activities were on display in the main en main entrance. Is that what that means? Main entrance. The mall. Emmy Mall. Okay, I don't, I didn't know. I was Emmy Mall during our eighth grade open house. Trifold displays, electronic media, and interactive stations allowed the eighth graders and their families to see the multitude of activities available to our students. Dance Club presented some K-pop routines and invited guests to join in in some popular dances. Art Club featured a creative drawing area. NABT Bio Club had microscopes with specimens to examine, and our Skills USA freshman program invited our eighth grade visitors to engage in a Skills USA Career Essentials Fun Fair game. During the month of December, National Technical Honor Society and National Honor Society students volunteered at Restore, the Habitat for Humanity store, where they organize and sort donations to be sold for charity. Members are required to complete 10 hours of community service each term, and they are always looking for new ways to help others. They are currently exploring partnerships with the WISH Project and the Lowell Transitional Center for future service events. The freshman and sophomore planning committees held a successful Butter Braid fundraiser during the month of December. The event raised $2,560 <coughs> to defer the cost of upcoming <coughs> activities and events. Educators Rising is creating a children's book that students will present at Educators Rising State Competition being held at UMass Lowell in March. The book is geared towards grades K through three and is a mystery story called Detective Checkers. The story encourages children to look beyond outside appearances and when making judgments. Our club hosted a special extended workshop last week where students were able to learn to make their own handmade jewelry. Students learned the finer points of beading and left workshop with their own finished pieces. 
Peer mentors are still looking for freshman mentees. Mentors will be going into freshman digital literacy classes this month to recruit new members. Mentors have been continuing their training and learning what it means to be a valuable mentor as well as strategies of effective communication. BioClub assembled 100 catapult packages for the science department to distribute at the 8th grade open house. They also planned their own interactive station, which was attended by more than 50 8th graders, their siblings and parents. During the month of January, BioClub will be studying the science behind snowflakes as we wait for more snow. <laughs> dance Club is practicing their routine for Turn It Up for the Turn It Up Dance Challenge being held in Lowell on March 17th to 19th, 2023. They've been received they've received a scholarship from the organization for their and entry fee and are excited to present their talents as well as their student created choreography. Cure, senior class planning committee has been finalizing the list for prom themes for seniors to vote on this month. Prom will be held on Friday, May 5th, 2023 at the Boston Marriott in Burlington. They are also starting to brainstorm senior week activities and are planning a carnival themed farewell on the last day for seniors, which will begin with our annual visit from the hypnotist Steve Wonker. Athletics. The swim and dive team have competed strong all season and look to be amongst the top finishers at, CA at the CAC League meet on February 1st. The ice hockey team currently holds a 5-6 to six record and will finish strong and secure a postseason tournament bid. The Griffin Cheer Squad will be heading to the NCA Cheer National in Dallas, Texas from January 20th through 22nd. They hope for a strong show showing as they prepare for a local competition starting next month. The competition dance team will enter its second year with a strong group of returning performers. They will, they will also start pre performing at home basketball games this season as they prepare for competitions next month. The girls and boys indoor track team currently sit near the top in the league this winter season. Both should be in the mix for the CAC championship being held February 11th at the Reggie Lewis Center in Boston. Boys and girls basketball both are off to strong starts as they head towards the midpoints of their respective seasons. The boys currently hold a 6-3 and three record while the girls check in at 7-2. and two. Both will look to secure tournament bids for the state vocational and MIA tournaments next month. The Griffin wrestling team has been amongst the toughest in the area, finishing fifth at the Wayland Holiday Tournament, as well as advancing a number of wrestlers in the Lowell holidays held over Christmas break. They will look to carry the momentum into, state vocation, into the state vocational meet on January 28th, as well as the MIA sectionals next month. Thank you. Good luck tomorrow night. Thank you. One question, the superintendent, on, sure. on uh, the dance club, the uh, Turn It Up Dance Challenge. Mm -hmm. It says it's being held in where? Do we have a location? Or uh, has it been secured yet? Held in Lowell? I, I don't. Okay. I can get back to you on that. Yeah, no, no hurry. I'd like to go. Oh. Outstanding. Thank you, Nellie. Thank you. Thanks, Nellie. Thank you, guys. Okay, now the approval of minutes. If I could have a motion to waive the reading. Okay. Motion by Mr. Gitchy, a second okay. by Mr. Sheehan. Roll call to waive the reading. Mr. Gitchy? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Okay, if I could have a motion to approve the uh, allocated Funds spent in January of 2023 in the sum of $5,338,532.14. Oh, okay. Motion by Mr. Morin, seconded yeah. by Mr. Sheehan. Roll call. Mr. Kitchen? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Report of general counsel. I'll be assessing the community executive Oh, okay. 
Great. Um, um, I, I overlooked one item. Thank heavens for our secretary right here. Um, the approval of our minutes of December 15, 2022. So, sorry. Okay, roll call. Mr. Roll. Gitchia? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Okay, report of our general counsel. If there is none tonight. That'll come at the end of the meeting. An executive session. An executive session, of course. Um, and next, we're going to have the uh, report of our superintendent. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I'd also like to, to welcome our new school, school committee members and look forward to working with them to move Greater Low Technical High School forward and to ensure that all of our students receive a quality education, vocational technical education. So uh, welcome uh, to Greater Low Technical High School. And the first item I am on my agenda, I'm happy to inform the school committee that Greater Low has been awarded <clears throat> excuse me, an additional $186,000 from the Commonwealth Corporation to run a second round of adult training programs. This grant will fund the electrical and welding training for 24 participants this summer and a carpentry training program for 12 participants in the fall. Awesome. Uh, I'm also happy to report that we have been awarded a career technical initiative grant in the amount of $144,000 to provide training for 24 participants in plumbing and culinary. And uh, we will be partnering with local agencies such as Lenzies, New Era Plumbing, HVAC, Marco Plumbing and Heating, Stones Hospitality Group, The Yoke Grill, Owens and Ollie's, Primo Pizza and Restaurant, and Middlesex Three Coalition. And I want to thank our community partners for supporting us uh, with this grant. The next item on my agenda is the Cooperative Education Report, which is in your packet. Uh, so I'd just like to say that although your packet indicates 174 senior students, uh, <clears throat> currently we have 176 uh, senior students on co-op, which is a total of 33% of our senior class is on co-op. Uh, and a copy is in your packet if anybody has any questions regarding our current co-op. Our co-op uh, director is currently working on placing our junior students out on co-op. Next on my agenda, I'd like to ask our assistant superintendent principal, Mr. Michael Barton, to join us to provide information regarding a request for out-of-state uh, travel for one of our science instructors, which is also in your packet. Welcome, Mr. Barton. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, the item, the agenda item is to ask for uh, approval for Aparna Sharma, who is a ninth grade honors biology teacher as well as an AP biology teacher, to attend the National Science Teacher Teachers Association's National Science Education um, program in Atlanta, Georgia from March 22nd to March 25th, which is a Wednesday through a Saturday. Uh, a little background on Ms. Sharma. Uh, Ms. Sharma is the person who designed the Advanced Placement Biology course. She is also the primary teacher of that course. And she also um, founded the Biology Club, uh, which was mentioned in your introduction tonight. Uh, there are 10 members of the Biology Club in grades 9 through 12, so they've been doing some exciting work uh, throughout the school community. Uh, Ms. Schammer is also a member of the steering committee on the Professional Learning Committee, uh, which has done an incredible amount of work with over 40 teachers uh, this summer and into this fall and spring. Uh, so wholeheartedly, I support her participation in this um, professional development event, uh, broken down into hotel travel, uh, airplane travel, hotel, expenses per diem, as well as uh, conference registration. We're looking for approval of $2,152. Any questions? Motion to approve by Mr. Morin, seconded by Mr. Sheehan. Roll call. Mr. Gitchin? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Good luck. Mr.
And that's the end of my report this evening. Okay, thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Um, we could have the report of our business manager, Mr. Knight. Okay, Mr. Right. Knight, welcome. Start, <laughs> start my report. Um, so we're actually going to go a little bit out of order. I'm going to go to my third item on my agenda, which was the surplus, uh, uh, the declaration of our smart boards to be uh, surplus. Um, and the media department's moving um, with the replacement schedules that we put together for our smart boards, looking at a useful life of roughly seven years on those. Uh, we have 17 smart boards currently that were manufactured in 20 and installed in 2015. Um, so they've reached what we declare as our end of life. Um, so we're looking to move those to surplus. And for the benefit of our new members, um, when something does get moved to surplus, the disposal process goes as follows. Um, we have to establish a value for the item Items. Um, anything that's valued over $5,000 has to follow Chapter 30B disposal process um, as established by the state. Um, anything that is valued below $5,000 we offer for free to our member municipalities, schools, um, etc. Um, if they're not interested, the property then gets put up for um, sale either through a public auction site or other means, um, depending on value, um, or looks to make a donation to another school or a charitable organization organization. Um, and finally, if none of those um, methods of disposal gain any interest, um, then we'll actually move to um, standard tr or traditional trash disposal um, of those items. <clears throat> So for the smart boards, we're looking for a motion to declare the 17 smart board surplus and then move them to that disposal process. Motion by Mr. Hogan. Second. Second by Mr. LeMay. Let me read the motion just to make sure. Um, to approve the establishment of, oh, my mistake. To declare 17 smart boards surplus. Roll call. Mr. Gitche? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheen? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. All right, next we'll move back to my first item on the agenda, which was uh, to declare the display cases uh, that were removed from the recently renovated Culinary Cafe um, and have those declared surplus. Um, these are uh, probably you know, six or so years old. Um, at, after a quick internet search, it looks like they're each going to hold a value of over $5,000, so we will have to go through that 30B process again, which is um, a publicly advertised process for the sale um, of those items um, <clears throat> so the motion on this would be to declare um, the two federal CGR 5042 DZ display cases um, that have been removed from the culinary cafe as surplus motion by mr. Hogan seconded by mr. Gitchier roll call Mr. Kitchier? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheen? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. And on the, the last surplus item of the evening, um, the metal fabrication uh, shop, as the floor was be re being redone last summer, evaluated the equipment that they had in place in the shop, um, what they used, what they might have duplicate items of, um, and found that there were two items that they um, either had duplicates of or no longer needed. The first was a uh, Kamiko or a Kamik roller uh, from 1998. Uh, this one is not functioning. It seems to have an electrical issue whenever they tried to rewire it or plug it in. It keeps tripping a breaker so um, probably unsafe to resell um, and probably just look to move that one to scrap. Um, and the second piece would be the have a 10 Smith F696 uh, 12 and 96 inch um, heavy duty steel brake. Um, they have two of these in the shop. Um, it's not a, a very commonly used piece of equipment in industry from what they've told me. Um, so they think that just having one would be plenty to teach the kids on um, in how to use it um, because they probably won't be doing a ton of work with it. Um, so that one probably does carry a value that is going to require that I go again to a kind of a reverse auction or an auction on that um, to put that out. I believe you know, new they carry a value of somewhere around $15,000. This one's a little bit older. I believe it was um, at least six or seven years old. Um, it just um, 
not something they have a great use for at the moment. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to declare both pieces of equipment surplus? Motion by Mr. Sheehan, seconded by Mr. LeMay. Roll call. Mr. Gitchin? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bavu? Yes. All right, and the next item on my agenda is to seek the approval to start the process of establishing a capital stabilization of fund for fund for Greater Lowell Technical High School. Um, the capital stabilization fund is allowable by Massachusetts General Law Chapter 71, 16 and a half, um, but will need to be voted at this board and then as well at city council and each town meeting of our surrounding member communities. Um, the funds in the capital stabilization can accumulate up to uh, 5% of your assessed value to your member communities, which is roughly 16 million for us right now, so 5% of 16 million. Um, and what this fund will help us do is to uh, create long range savings for larger capital items that we might have in the future. Um, it's also a, gonna be, we're gonna be able to use it as um, a way to move money out of restricted funds such as our adult education funds and LPN program funds and move them into this capital stabilization fund so that they can then be used. Um, when they're held in the individual program funds, they're very restricted um, in the use of those funds, but because those fund those programs don't get charged for building use uh, space and those types of things, um, by creating the capital stabilization fund and moving the money annually from those um, restricted funds to our general fund and then over to capital stabilization, we're able to sort of, um, I guess, make them more accessible for our communities or for our school, um, which eventually will uh, reduce the assessed value, uh, the assessment that we need to make to our communities. Um, as you know, we don't have much uh, of a method or a mechanism to save in the district, just our excess and deficiency, um, which we currently have. Um, but this allows us to add a second layer to that so that as the building ages and things come up for projects, um, we'll be able to either tackle them on our own or at least offset the cost to the member communities. Okay, uh, we have a question by Mr. Hogan. Mr. Knight, could you just educate me a bit on the source of the funds? Yep, so we run um, programs that are um, I would, say, I would say outside of our core. Um, so in the evenings, we every student that graduate, well, student or anyone that wants to be in the electrical field, plumbing field, they have to maintain certifications and in increase their education as, to do so. Um, so we run those programs at night um, through our adult education. Um, and then we also offer a post-secondary program, so a college level nursing program that runs days and nights. Um, so these these programs are outside of our core um, as a K-12 school. Um, not 9 to 12 school, not K to 12, but um, outside of our course, they're um, in, in some districts, they are run by third party organizations. We run all of ours internally, um, but depending on where you go, the, the method of how those programs are run is different. <laughs> so, what effect, monetarily speaking, would this have on the student attending those? Classes. So we won't have to change any tuition rates or anything like that, that for the people that are in those programs. Um, we tend to charge uh, the lower end um, for those programs based on what I've checked myself. Um, and this isn't going to affect what they have to pay, um, but uh, it just um, becomes a, a financial mechanism to help the school utilize those funds for um, capital projects. Which is a good thing. Yep. So there's no impact... No, nope, we don't. A non core student in the evening. No, nope, they're all going to have the same tuition rate. They're not going to see a change in any manner at all. It's um, it's more back end mechanics for me. So this vote is this all or nothing or a majority of the uh, representing districts? Um, I believe it's a two thirds of our community. So for us, it'll be three out of four. Right. Which, okay. Whichever three get to it first. Mr. Exactly. <laughs> LeMay. <clears throat> Mike, are these like uh, are they dedicated funds for certain aspects, or can they be utilized for like anything? So that we renovate, it just becomes expand or it becomes available. The, um, 
So they have to be for anything that could be considered a capital project that you would borrow for. Um, so anything that we could potentially finance. Um, so generally projects of, I mean, we're restricted on capital spending to a cap of 150,000 right now by the state mm -hmm. statute, I think it's CMR 60310. Um, so really anything above that, our only mechanism to do it, whether we had the funding or not, is to go out and do um, a capital project which would be, um, which we would borrow for. Based on the size of the school and the amount that you said, it, it, it's, it's a considerable chunk of change. Yeah, we could, we could um, I mean, over time, I think it would take <coughs> many years because the amounts that we're going to charge to these programs aren't aren't big dollar figures. We have to do it based on um, what we would normally charge someone in industry. So for use of a classroom, it's like 10 bucks an hour. So if, if the electrical program runs 75 hour program fall on a 75 hour spring, I mean, we're talking about 1500 bucks uh, on that one program per year, we could accumulate up to 800,000. And that, and that would kind of be the goal is that you want to accumulate that fund up as much as possible so that you know, I know we did the big reno in 2014, 2016. I hate to say it, but you know, that means stuff's going to be 10 years old that we put in three years from now, and the likelihood of something coming up and you need a $500,000 rooftop unit, you know, we won't have, we might have that in E&D, we might not. Um, but then being able to say, you know, we've got 100000 over here in capital stabilization, we take 300 out of uh, E&D, that means we're only charging the members, you know, that last 100 that we couldn't come up with. Um, without that mechanism, we're kind of hands tied and that money can accumulate into the, the funds for the LPN and the um, night school or adult ed programs as they have over years, um, it just becomes inaccessible to us. Oh, thank you. Very enlightening. Any other questions? Motion approved. Second. Do we need a vote to reverse this if we choose to in the future? Of the same three quarter? Um, I would say once it's established, it would be established. In, yeah, order, in order to reverse it, it would seem like we would have to uh, not be making any money uh, off of our night program. Well, we could also choose as a board not to put any money into it, correct? Yep. When yep. you come to before us, sort of yeah, like... we have to come to us. Right, it comes to us, so if we don't want to put any money in, we just don't have to. Yeah, and then the use of funds has to come through the board as well. So Jill and I couldn't make a decision on a Thursday afternoon that we're, we're doing something with this money. It all has to come back here so for So just established. My concern is the cost to the student, that's all. There's no cost to any student. Yeah. We, 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 we haven't raised prices on our night programs, uh, Mr. Hogan, in the time that I've been here. And I did a quick look, just just for peace of mind on that, I did a quick look around. Um, I think we're cheaper than Greater Lawrence. We're cheaper than Shashin for sure. Um, I just looked at the local you know, vocational schools just to see what they were charging, and uh, I think we're the cheapest out of, out of at least the drivable area. If not the cheapest, we're, we're pretty close. Well, but that's because we're in a city school district, and we sort of keep an eye out yep. for our yep. uh, population. For sure. Okay, so motion by Mr. Sheehan to approve the establishment of a capitalization account for the Greater Lowell Regional Vocational Technical School District, and seconded by Mr. Gitchier. Any other questions? A roll call. Mr. Gitchier? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. That concludes my report tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, any items uh, brought up under old business that people would like to discuss right now? This is the time to go ahead and do it. Okay. We'll move on to new business. Any thoughts? I just got one like thing to discuss. The, uh, the culinary cafe, because when I came in and got my packet, I usually go grab a coffee. They were in the middle of doing it over. And it was basically our maintenance department, along with Jill and Mike, you know, leading it. And it came out beautiful. It was real quick, done. And it came out nice. So it was just give a kudos to the maintenance department, everybody that was involved. It's a great program, and it yeah, needed it a nice renovation. It is. And it's amazing that they sort of did it. 
during right. dur during the Christmas break. Well, no, it was, it was done it was last three week. days ago. Three days ago. Yeah. <laughs> How great is that? Yeah, yeah. It was, I'll tell you what. It was done in in really. Yeah, it was yeah, quick. It was our, it was our maintenance department. <laughs> with, it was it was quick. Good. Was, so nobody even missed the coffee. Uh, no, no, it no. was closed. It was closed. It was closed. We can't work miracles. Outstanding. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that, Mr. Gitchier. Okay, uh, new business. Oh, there is new business. Uh, committee pe committee person motions. There are none. Uh, report of subcommittees. There were no subcommittee meetings last month. Therefore, there is no report. And uh, we're going to need uh, two votes to go into executive session. Vote number one would be for executive session pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A2, to conduct strategy sessions and preparations for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, teaching assistant. Could I have a motion to go into executive session for that? Second. Motion by Mr. LeMay, second, seconded by Mr. Morin. Roll call, please. Mr. Gitchin? Yeah. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. And I need a second motion for executive session pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect of collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting law may have detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and the chair so declares. Greater Lowell Technical High School Committee versus Greater Lowell Regional Teachers Association. 2181 CV 4292 and American Arbitration Association case number 0120 1722. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Sheehan, second by Mr. Gitchier. Roll call. Mr. Gitchier? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Okay, uh, let's take a five minute Wait, one break. One second, can we, yep. are we taking a vote coming out of here? Can we adjourn and then come out? It seems like we may have to take a vote. Okay. okay. So, I just want to ask how we can. Sure. Just in case. So, five minute break and then we'll go into executive session. I think I have seen I was like, I think I remember. Okay, uh, we just come out of executive session and pursuant to Mass General Law 30A, we have uh, decided to revise uh, a lead teaching position for our RISE program. Teaching uh, assistant. Teaching assistant position for our RISE program. Um, and I uh, would like to take a vote to uh, create that um, new title. I'll make a motion. And, and, adv and advertise for a new teacher. Assistant. Teaching assistant. Motion by Mr. Gitchier for the new teaching assistant for our RISE program. Seconded by Mr. LeMay. Roll call. Mr. Gitchier? Yes. Mr. Morin? Yes. Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Okay, and that essentially um, <laughs> ends our meeting. And we have a motion by Mr. Sheehan to adjourn, seconded by Mr. Hogan. Roll call to adjourn. Mr. Gitchin? Yes. Mr. Morin? Mr. Richardson? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Present. Mr. LeMay? Yes. Mr. Sheehan? Yes. Mr. Bahu? Yes. Okay. It's a wrap. Thank you, everyone, for watching.